Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Samsung Series 5 Chromebook 550, which is a big name for a relatively little laptop. And I wanted to take a couple of minutes to do a video review of this. I was loaned the uh, laptop from uh, Samsung and Google for about two weeks for review purposes, and I've been putting it through the paces. And there's a lot to like about this little guy um, in terms of sort of portability, speed, performance, um, but it does take a little bit of getting used to because basically what sets a Chromebook apart from a similar thin and light laptop like say the HP Pavilion DM1, which is a similar size, is that instead of running Windows like the HP, this guy is running Chrome OS. It's a lightweight operating system designed basically to run one application, a web browser. And so you can do some pretty nifty things with that. Uh, for instance, this has an Intel Celeron processor. It's not the fastest chip around, but it resumes from sleep almost instantly and lets you get online and switch between applications and, and so forth. And overall feels very responsive. This is actually the second uh, version of the Chromebook that Samsung has put out. Last year there was a version with an Intel Atom processor, wasn't quite as responsive and snappy, and Chrome OS wasn't quite as robust at the time. Um, but now over the last year a lot of interesting things have happened and uh, the, the overall performance is really pretty great. Um, one thing is that we've got sort of a separate screen here now for all of your applications. You don't have to just open a browser tab to view a list of apps. And when we're talking about apps, these are all web applications uh, for the most part. They're things that run in a web browser. But you can see that we've got now different, well, let's go ahead and show this, different tabs here on the bottom that let you switch between windows. It's not all one window anymore. And you can pin applications that you use regularly to the bottom. So for instance, I've got the Trillion application that I use for chat, TweetDeck for uh, managing Twitter, and uh, Google Reader, Gmail, and so forth. Now there is a file manager built in, which is uh, also a little bit improved in that you can now edit or do some very basic editing on photos or screenshots such as cropping or adjusting the brightness or rotating. You can't resize here, which is something that I use uh, pretty frequently. Uh, fortunately, WordPress now includes the ability to resize applications. So I can open up uh, the image here, crop it, and then just send it to WordPress and resize it. Um, it's not quite as efficient as just using a quick application like uh, Irfan View for Windows to do my image editing, but as a blogger, basically, you know, the ability to write text and the ability to edit images, uh, crop and resize images, are the two most important things for me. I used to be a radio producer uh, full-time, and to do that I really need to be able to do some serious audio editing. And that's something that you're not going to be able to do here. You can't run Photoshop, you can't run Adobe Audition, you can't run um, Pro Tools. But if you don't need those sorts of applications, there are a lot of web applications that you can use. In fact, Aviary, which is a company that uh, offers a web-based um, image editor also makes an audio editing tool, but uh, you know, in order to use that, you would have to upload all of your audio to a server, edit it, then download it, then upload it to whatever FTP site or whatever you're trying to do. So it's not the the simplest thing. Or even doing video, if you have uncompressed videos that are a gigabyte in size, it's nice to be able to use a local application to transcode those videos into a smaller file before uploading them to YouTube. Um, and that's something that I think is really going to be easier on a Windows or Mac computer for now. Um, but overall, it's it's pretty impressive what you can do given how much of what we do these days is based online. Uh, so for instance, you want to play music, you can use the Google Music application and access files that are uh, uploaded to your account. If you want to watch videos, you can go to YouTube, you can go to Netflix. Netflix works pretty well on here, even though it's got a Linux core, there's a version of Netflix that does not require Silverlight, which has been designed to run on this platform. And uh, yeah, so for the last couple of weeks I've been using this guy and overall, even though it only runs web browser, even though pretty much everything that you can do on it, you could also do with a full desktop style operating system like Windows just by installing the Chrome web browser, the speed and responsiveness make it really feel like a pretty great experience. Um, the keyboard is a full QWERTY style keyboard with some special keys including back and refresh and full screen and window mode here. We've got our brightness and our volume and so forth at the top. Uh, there's a dedicated search key because 
well, it is running Google's operating system, and that is a search engine company. Um, it would be nice if these uh, keys were a little bit larger, but the biggest problem I really have is that there's no delete key, there's no um, page up, page down, home and end. In order to access those, you have to do some weird key combinations like alt backspace for delete or uh, control alt up or down for um, page up and page down or left and right for home and end. It's, uh, it takes a little getting used to. Um, also, it takes a little getting used to the touchpad if you're, not from, if you're not used to using the sort of touchpad that doesn't have dedicated left and right buttons. You can plug in a USB mouse and use it just as you normally would with left clicks and right clicks, but uh, this touchpad lets you right click by tapping with two fingers. So for instance, I can go in here and say I want to pin the NPR for Chrome application to my launcher. I right click by pressing two buttons and then choose pin to launcher. It took me a pretty long time to get used to that, and from time to time I find myself single clicking when I mean to right click. And that can be a problem if, say, you're in a web browser and you want to right-click and open something in a new tab instead of replacing the page you're on with a new page, um, and you accidentally left-click instead of right-clicking. Uh, but now that I am used to it, it's just so much easier to use one hand and sort of go up and down. Uh, you can do two-finger scrolling, two-finger left and right scrolling, and two-finger tapping. Um, that when I go to use other uh, laptops that do have distinct buttons, I find myself wanting to use two-finger gestures instead of um, instead of those buttons. So it takes a little getting used to, but once you're used to it, it's really pretty nice. Now, I mentioned speed, and we looked at how quickly this resumes from sleep, but let's take a quick look at how quickly it actually shuts down entirely. I'm just going to press the power button. Actually, I'm going to press the shutdown button, and the screen goes off, and it's shut down. Let's press the power button to turn it back on. And we're online. As quickly as that. So it's uh, it's pretty impressive in terms of speed. Again, given that it's not the fastest processor in the world, but it's much faster than the processor in earlier Chromebooks, and definitely fast enough for uh, for what you need here. Now, there's not a lot of local storage. There's only 16 gigabytes of solid state storage in here, and that is enough for the operating system and to download some pictures and. Uh, maybe some music and some other files, but if you are really tied to the idea of carrying around your entire movie collection, you're going to want to have uh, you know, a USB disk drive or something in order to plug in and, uh, and do that. But really, if you're tied to the idea of local storage, then a Chromebook might not be right for you. Uh, this is for like web browsing. It's for people who like the idea of a tablet, which has you know, sort of always-on kind of capabilities. You press the button, and it immediately wakes up. Um, but like having a keyboard, and don't necessarily feel the need for a touchscreen tablet. Um, this has wound up becoming sort of the first device that I grab when I just need to get online real quick, make check my email, post something to Facebook, or even do some light blogging because of the fact that it's just so responsive. Uh, in terms of connectivity and ports, we've got a display port, Ethernet jack, uh, that's the power adapter, one USB port, and a headset jack. And on the other side, one more USB port for a total of two, and an SD card slot, and a lock. On the bottom, not really that much of anything. We've got um, no access panel, so you couldn't really upgrade the RAM if you wanted to. It comes with four gigabytes. You couldn't really upgrade the um, um, storage, at least not without disassembling the case. Um, there's a couple of vents here, and they do get a little bit noisy from time to time, especially when you're watching videos or doing other things that are going to tax the uh, processor. And we've got stereo speakers on the left and right, which are not the loudest, not the clearest, but uh, you know, not too bad. On the back, we've got a SIM card slot. This particular model is the $550 model that includes Verizon 3G. Um, there's also a $450 version, which comes with Wi-Fi only. And overall, it's not a bad device for $450. The biggest problem is that something like this HP Pavilion sells now for $400 or less. So it's kind of hard to justify a device that is only meant to run a web browser when you can get something that can run all sorts of local applications as well. But if you're sold on the idea of a quick, responsive, lightweight computer that gets six to seven hours of battery life and offers decent web browsing performance and not much else, uh, the Chromebook is, is an interesting device that's definitely worth checking out. It's um, uh, much better than last year's version and I've actually had a lot of fun playing with it for the last two weeks. This is Brad Linder for Lilliputing with a Chromebook 550 review.